Hey viewers, welcome to VL Astrology once again. I'm Manita Lenka. I'm a Vedic astrologer and I use this ideal zodiac to predict. These predictions are based on your ascendant or the moon sign, whichever resonates more with you. Please hear both and then decide yourself which one is matching up more. Hey, this is the 42nd week of the year 2021. And this is based on moon's movement because moon is the swift test and impacts us internally, externally both. As per your horoscope where your moon is and when the moon's interaction with the transit moon is forming some kind of connectivity, you feel a little uneasy or you feel very elated. At times there is mixed kind of feeling as well. So this week moon is going to be transiting through Sagittarius, a Capricorn and Aquarius lastly. And 11, 12, 13th moon is going to be in Sagittarius, 14, 15th in Capricorn, and 16, 17th in Aquarius. What are the highlights of the week? We have Saturn getting direct. Yes, after May 23rd, Saturn is going to be getting direct on the 11th of October. We have suns transiting through the Libra sign. Right now, when I'm making this video, sun is uh, an Avarohi Graha, which is moving towards its debility. This is called the Tula Sankranti, that is sun's ingress in Libra sign. That's why I said I don't use the tropical zodiac because as per them, sun has already already entered Libra. We have Durga Ashtami on the 13th and we have the Shehra Vijay Dashmi on the 15th. Very pious festivals we have this week because of the Navratri festival which is going on. I said last week also, please propitiate goddess and you will be blessed with whatever you ask, the mother will give. Somebody was telling me, you know, the other day, um, why do you dress up so much? Why can't you be simple? You see, I believe that one must do as per the planetary positions. And what are the planets asking you to do? Sun, for me, is integrity. I follow that. Jupiter is knowledge. I share that. Intellect, Mercury. And I love to... Uh, Share it with everyone. Moon is the nurturing one. I love to impart my little bit of knowledge and that is the way I am being nurturing. I'm being uh, compassionate. I'm being your own. That's the mother. That's the moon. Then we have uh, Venus to top it all. Why not be forming that kind of beauty externally also? And why not do things which... Venus likes. And why not look good? Why an astrologer has to have that stamp that no, or categorized as, you know, has to be simple, looks wise, can't wear jewelry, can't wear good clothes. Should I be uh, wearing rug clothes? Do you think I will be doing that? Will you like that? Will you watch me? No. It's just that, that I want to behave the way my planets want me to. And it is sort of a remedy also. We all must follow these planets. They are indicative of something. Everybody should dress up well. And somebody feels that if it is overly done, I, I am sorry about that. It is because I love to dress up for myself first and then for you all, okay? Mars is boldness and firmness. So Rahu Ketu, of course, little difficult planets. But yes, we all are in material realms and spiritual realms also because of this Rahu Ketu energy. So just enjoy your life. Everything is perfect and everything is going to be perfect if it's not right now. All right. So let's move on to this video. First of all, Saturn is getting direct. Even if you have a retrograde Saturn in your horoscope, you will be enjoying the uh, comforts of this ret uh, di retrogression direct movement of uh, Saturn. So when you have to check the transits, you must see how the planets are placed in, this, uh, in your horoscope, in your personal horoscope. And what is the placement of the other planets in the sky? How far are they from your natal planets? Suppose you, you have your moon in um, Leo. So suppose moon is transiting through the 8th house Pisces. So you might feel a little uncomfortable, restless, 
difficult to make decisions that day. Or maybe, you know, it just backfires. Whatever decisions you will make, it might just backfire. You might be overly em emotional that day. From Saturn, if Saturn is transiting through the eighth house, suppose. So it might give you some, uh, you know, hardships, some kind of obstacles in your life. If you have uh, your Saturn in Leo in the natal chart, and if it is transiting through, right now it is transiting through Cap uh, Capricorn. So for Gemini natives, this is the eighth house transit. So it might give you over six, eight, 12 transits, you know, they might give you some uh, discomfort. It might give you health issues or might give you breaks in your career. So that's how you should decipher the planets. Sun stays for uh, one month in a particular sign. So it will definitely give you some, uh, you know, loss of fame or, uh, you know, problems with the authorities when your son is transiting the eighth house from your lagna or from your natal sun. So you should see maybe from moon, it is transiting through the eighth house. So you have to see how planets are transiting through in the sky, your natal charts, position of the planets. That's how you can do it yourself. So it's very simple. Um, it's a very simple technique. Why make it so complicated? There are a number of rules, of course. We have a whole book, uh, you know, based on this, you know, the Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra. But we have to understand, we have to interpret that also. So to that is why I'm making it too simple for you so that you all can understand the transits. How is the dasha? How is it actually synchronizing with the transit? If you are having a da particular dasha and the transit is not companion, uh, is, is not tally with this dasha, is not having that kind of connectivity with this dasha, sorry, the event will not take place. All right. So this is what is going to be happening this week. And uh, this is how you can check your transits and see um, from your moon's nakshatra, where are the moon's nakshatra in the transit um, transiting through? If they are the three, five, seven nakshatras, then also that uh, when moon is transiting through, uh, that also is going to be giving you some kind of discomfort, health issues, or some kind of mental uh, imbalance at that time. And new moons and full moons, of course, if you have an afflicted moon in your horoscope in, by birth, then new moons and full moons are also going to be very difficult days. Uh, you might just uh, not be able to make right kind of decisions at that time. Or maybe some decisions that you make, they are not going to be uh, uh, acceptable to others. Or you can get a little confused. You can get a little uh, restless that day. So all those energies are uh, to be checked so it's not easy also, but yes, I'm trying to make it very simple for you. Okay, there are many, 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 many uh, parameters that we have to go through um, while deciphering the chart. And I must tell you that uh, festive discounts are going to close soon. So please book your readings. Um, I'm not doing any specific readings any longer, just the whole chart reading. And if you have a birth time rectification or auspicious timing, that is, the, these are the separate readings. Uh, so if you want to book last week of December and then January is available. So if at all you want to, please write into realastrology24 at gmail.com. The discounts have not changed on uh, the website. So I've not updated it. So kindly drop an email and you will get to know. So what exactly uh, should we be doing this week? Because Saturn is getting direct. So this is the time, whatever jobs are lying pending, you can complete them. This is a good period for uh, initiation of jobs also, especially when Saturn is direct and started to move, uh, move forward. But when it is stationary for five days plus minus, then you have to just lie low. Um, status quo. In case you have to, of course, do something, make some decisions, you can definitely go ahead with it. Sun debilitates in Libra sign. Sun is actually not a very emotional planet. So the compassionate one, Sun is the king after all. Sun is authority. So when it is, uh, when he is moving into the sign owned by Venus, he's, he has to be balanced. He has to form connectivity with everybody um, equally. So that becomes a little difficult task for the sun. That's why he debilitates there. So once sun enters this month into the sign of debility, so one must be, uh, you know, compassionate, strike that balance in relationship and 
must maintain for one month this kind of uh, you know atmosphere around you where you feel uh, comfortable and make others also comfortable start some new friendships during this time they definitely are going to work rather than being in that secluded form you know in that uh, in that mood okay so this will be a good uh, uh, you know week for one and all definitely on the face of it it looks very beautiful but yes personally you know you have to see if you are feeling some kind of energies it's going to last for 6 hours because moon is going to be in the navmanshas transiting through the navmanshas every 6 hours it changes it's transiting through the navmanshas and remains in one navmansha for 6 hours and for uh, 24 hours in a nakshatra that is why seven nakshatras in a, in seven days okay so I'll be mentioning all the nakshatra transits also in the description box. My description box are very uh, uh, useful because I give lots of information in that. So please do go through it. Uh, you will get a lot of information. Don't miss out on reading the information there. And uh, in case you have any queries, you can just drop an email to my team. All right. Let's start with the predictive. To start with Aries first. So for Aries people, moon is going to be transiting your... 9th, 10th, and 11th houses. It's going to be hemmed between Ketu and uh, Saturn, of course. But Saturn is no more retrograde, so it's moving forward. And then we'll be transiting through your 10th house, Jupiter and Saturn, as it is, are there, then 11th house. So this is the week when you will be feeling quite charged up towards doing things which are going to give you satisfaction. You're going to be inclined to doing things which are going to lead to some freedom, sense of uh, adventure, travels. Maybe you're going to be traveling, taking up travel. Also, there can be some um, X of yours comes into your life. You are actually, you know, getting a little uncomfortable or maybe you're going to be, your partner is going to feel a little uncomfortable because of that as well. But uh, definitely a positive um, transit for higher learning enhancing your skills in case you're thinking of doing things which are you know going to enhance you as a person so you, this is a very positive one there are certain challenges that you are going through already because of the saturn uh, you know i've already made that video if you can watch it you will feel that there are people who are exploiting you a lot you feel that you are not in that mode where uh, you are getting that kind of satisfaction. You, you feel that there are challenges which are making life tougher. But don't worry, things are going to be very uh, smooth soon. Uh, you have to just take the blessings of your elders. It's better that you know you uh, do not have any kind of grudges against people. Uh, moon will be transiting through your 10th house, Jupiter and Saturn as it is are there. And it's going to be a you know, expansive and a very contractive energy simultaneously. So you will feel that there are certain people who are not listening to you, who are not uh, acknowledging you. So you feel a little uneasy because of that. But yes, it is very positive to initiate something new, change of job, quite likely that you are joining somewhere also. And there is some political success, practical aspirations that are going to be uh, giving you that, uh, you know, upliftment also uh, also moon is going to be in your 11th house 11th house energy is always you know the energy of uh, mixing with people socializing with people so you're mentally quite charged up this week and you're going to be breaking the rules uh, maybe in that mood where you know you are meeting up your friends after a long time and you're going to be very uh, pally with them and you're going to be feeling that sense of belonging also uh, maybe you are going to be uh, meeting your meeting your partner, some uh, you know potential partner. Maybe we can say, and you are going to be uh, having some uh, conversation at a party or at a get together, and you might just go ahead with that relationship also. And there can be that you are feeling very uh, emotionally at attached or protective or supportive of your friends. Maybe you take some advice from them and then, you know, they're going to be very helpful for you, helpful to you also. Um, you see Rahu is in your second house and Sun is going to be in your seventh house. So the energy is more towards uh, having some clashes with your partner. 
so you have to have uh, that mellow down towards that towards uh, you know uh, your partner at least you know just give in it's okay at times what happens we have that those ego clashes because of the sun energy but sun is going into the balancing sign so this is the time when you should balance things out figure that out that you know things are going to be getting better gradually things are going to be getting better mercury and jupiter are going to be getting direct next week so communication can suffer because of this you know or with your uncles aunts with your uh, your own partner there can be some misunderstanding also your lagnesh is also in the 6th house so take care of your health as well but lot of energy that's why i said some new change some new beginning coming your way ketu venus are transiting your 8th house so this is considered to be little tough a kind of a placement um especially your second and seventh lord is gone to the eight some problems with your in laws with your partner or your partner's health can suffer so you have to be extra cautious about your partner's health also during this uh, whole transit uh, jupiter is well positioned in the kendra so it is giving you that support you are going to be uh, forming some good connectivity with the bosses seniors you're going to be striking that conversation which you could not do from a long long time travels uh, you know are going to be fruitful some overseas connectivity is definitely possible maybe you are going to be getting a lot of business boost because of this saturn is also moving in the direct motion i have made a video on the saturn aspect and the 8th house connectivity so you can just watch that video that is a little uh you know it's a very sharp video because you will get to know about the plus and the minus both in that especially the minuses you know because saturn is a malefic and i'm talking about the 8th house so 8th house energies are definitely not that great so do watch that video and uh, let me know what exactly you felt about it because i want your feedback on that video as well so uh, for you the best remedy that i can suggest at the moment is Uh, because saturn has gotten direct jupiter is in retrograde so the best would be om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om that's a chant you should be doing and if you can uh, donate something in uh, red during the uh, days of navratris of goddess so donate to little girls because K venus is with ketu in the 8th house so donate some uh, red colored clothes to the uh, small uh, you know ch girl child so if you will do that it will really help you don't tell lies don't cook up stories because rahu is in the second house maintain that integrity maintain that uh, you know that gravity um, because rahu in the second house will give you uh, you know um, not uh, you know you're not truthful you're cooking up a lot of stories so don't do that don't be fool people for making money that's something that you have to work on do not just uh, get carried away because of this uh, you know rahu in the second house it will lure you it will make you incline towards the negatives or the materialistic realms of life but everybody is materialistic you know in this world till the time we are here something or the other is definitely you know uh, that uh, uh, there is something which is actually we are hooking on to so this rahu energy it actually is a very expansive and a negative energy towards making you uh, go towards that that path take that path which is not the righteous path rahu energy is very very uh, material right now because it's in a materialistic sign also so you have to be watchful all right coming to the next sign that is taurus so for taurus natives moon is going to be in your 8th house 9th house and 10th house this week Eighth house energy generally, you know, will be uh, giving you a lot of mood swings. Rahu energy is as it is over your first house, so you are in that kind of a dilemma whether you should be taking this decision or not. Maybe you have taken a wrong decision in the past and you are repenting. You are regretful. This week you will feel some kind of problems in relationship. Maybe some kind of somebody from the past. or somebody from the known circle will come into your life and will try to sabotage your relationship maybe it's some relative of yours or it could be somebody from your known circle so you have to be maintaining that gravity be strong don't get swayed away don't get carried away because of these external forces maintain good relationship with your partner okay because venus is afflicted right now when venus is afflicted 
it impacts the artistic people it impacts the uh, it, it is also in the eighth sign so scandals it is very scandalous here and also it is with ketu ketu energy is also pretty uh, much you know detaching energy or it can spoil the significations of venus so you might not be feeling up to uh, conversation with people uh, girls might get impacted you know they're mentally you know they're uh, not getting that kind of satisfaction in whatever they're doing um bollywood industry you know or uh, film industry i would say not bollywood alone but yeah film industry will suffer there can be some uh, scandals which can come up a lot uh, and in your personal life there will be some secrets which can be revealed and there are certain things that you will maybe you know you will be taking some major major decisions because it's the sixth lord after all in the seventh house so venus is relationship and moon is in the eighth house so there is a lot of energy which is indicative of problems in relationship surrounding that there can be some issues that you have to sort out uh, maybe there is some divorce you're going undergoing or may, maybe there's some separation you're thinking of all that you should actually postpone because this is the time when you should actually think about it till the 30th of october especially when venus is with ketu avoid making decisions moon will be conjunct jupiter and saturn and this will be the time when you will be uh, getting connected with your elderly people you should seek their blessings in fact they can be that you are going to be having a lot of support from uh, some from the masses maybe your labor class will be supportive of you maybe somebody from the uh, you know from the uh, from your workplace is supportive of you at the moment luck is by your side whatever you do it's like you know the last minute the luck pulls you out from that problem it just gives you that hand the divine force which is actually protective uh, force also so you're feeling that energy quite a lot of times you're driving and you're it's a close shave you feel that oh my god i would have been dead by now you know it's like that kind of a feeling that you're going through many, many times you have experienced this many many times since saturn has transited through your ninth house saturn is a huge protector also strict disciplinarian though but he's the karma karak if you are doing a good karma this luck will be by your side so do not spoil your relationship with people relationship with your own uh, spouse your partner um, also mercury is retrograde mars is in your fifth house so your your children might be going for education maybe you are going to be uh, making money with the help of your siblings because your second lord is conjunct uh, your mars so mercury and mars somebody from the family is going to be supportive of you children are going to be supportive of you children are going to initiate some new assignment they are going to be getting some overseas connection with uh, maybe your in income is enhancing because of the overseas connectivity in case there is a job like trading uh, business so that might enhance because of this combination in the chart sun is going to be in the 6th house debilitation sign but still it is going to be little better why because it's the 6th house energy 6th house energy is going to actually give you that authority that balance at the place of work you're going to be making good decisions right now or you have to actually align everything you have to delegate also some tasks that you have been doing yourself you know you're going to be delegating so this is a very crucial transit for you of suns sun in because sun is uh, going into the sign which is ruled by your um, ascendant also so ascendant lord and sixth lord are one that is venus and venus is afflicted right now so the disposition of lord of sun is afflicted so that is going to give that boost to this sun in a way because here venus is not able to debilitate the sun much because he himself is afflicted so what it means that you will have a good authority you will have a lot of uh, energy where you will be boosting yourself your ego up and you will be doing some real good uh, policy making decisions if you are into politics of course it's a good time for you any which way so six house energy is not considered to be a bad placement for sun the upshaya houses 3 6 10 11 houses are good for this sun 
okay moon will be it lastly in your 10th house so the in energy is pretty much towards emotional energy you want that uh, appreciation acknowledgement from your bosses your seniors your co-workers you have a lot of uh, anxiety that day maybe you know when moon is in aquarius sign and it's a sign when you might be having a party at uh, at the place of work. Maybe, you know, you're going to be mixing around with people. You're going to be talking uh, to a lot of people, lots of uh, work. And maybe, you know, there is a lot of um, lo uh, so many meetings and you're feeling very uh, exhausted. So take a break. Take a break. Uh, after this, of course, moon will be transiting next week towards your 11th house. So you, as it is, will be getting that break. So uh, good time for uh, student natives, good for health also. Health is improving for sure with sun transiting through the sixth house. Sixth house will give you health issues, but sun will take care of your health as well. Uh, good time for uh, children, good time for uh, education. Luck is in by your side, but Venus is under affliction. Your love niche is under affliction your, or your moon sign, Lord, is under affliction. So you have to be extra careful about the Venetian energy. So start donating something like rice, wheat, not wheat, sorry, something in white. So rice, sugar, uh, do the Saraswati chants. You will get them on the YouTube or I'll uh, share the link so that you can do the chant. And... Uh, and then you can do the uh, to the Devi, you know, to the goddess, you can propitiate the goddess as well. So whatever you feel like doing, you know, from within, okay, I feel like doing this. Understand that that particular planet is actually wanting something from you to do. So do it. Suppose you feel like uh, giving your best of the dress or best of your clothes to somebody, just give it away. Don't even think about it. You know, I have seen if I give something, I don't know somehow I get it 10 times. I'm what, you know, I, I've got this, what I'm wearing today. Somebody has gifted it to me because the very same day I had given a shawl, uh, which was really expensive and a very beautiful one. I had gifted it to somebody and you won't believe the very next day. It was the, I think the very next day, the whole set came as in a package and it was a beautiful gift that I have when I opened it it's not about the money you know it's not about it's about the feel the, the energy that I got from that so one must be generous the more you are generous I have seen you will get 10 times okay so be more generous be more uh, be, be more uh, compassionate rather than being calculative because Rahu energy you know over your head in the uh, Taurus sign will not let you be that compassionate. It will just seclude you, make you selfish, make you self-centric. So with Venus energy, I feel that you should actually be more, uh, you know, towards giving others, okay? It, it will come back to you 10 times, but don't give with this expectation that I will give something to somebody and then I will get it 10 times. Don't do that, all right? So do the remedies and you will feel good feel good feel better also coming to gemini so for gemini natives uh, saturn is going to be getting direct and that too in your eighth house definitely very positive because whenever saturn is in retrogression it is moving backwards to the previous house which is again afflicting that house so now i'm very very confident that saturn moving ahead will give you good health improvement in your thought process and the jobs the obstacles that you have been going through till now they are going to get uh, you know uh, healed or they're going to get that uh, that that that's going to get um, eradicated or the solutions will be coming your way so again it is going to be because it's going to be moving towards its own mutrikona rashi which is your luck lord also luck house also you are going to be feeling much better okay with this Saturn's direct motion. Uh, your Lagnesh is in retrogression in your fourth house, transiting there with Mercury also, uh, with uh, Ma Mars also. Sun is going to be leaving this zone and going to be in your fifth house. So you are actually in that zone where you, are, you want to enhance your uh, intellect. You want to be more wise. You want to just learn things uh, and pick up things from where you left. 
this is also the time to get connected with your friends, friend circle, uh, take advice from them, from somebody who is into that particular trade that you want to seek advice from. Also mix with people. Do not uh, look for, uh, you know, uh, don't, don't think of petty things. Think about the bigger picture. What exactly can you do? What exactly can be, uh, can, can I, how I can improvise on the future? So with Mercury and Mars combination, this is like, you know, a uh, six, eight relationship because of the lordship. So this can bring about some obstacles or hindrances in your education, purchasing of property, land or uh, vehicles. Maybe you're thinking of, uh, you know, purchasing these kind of things. Uh, but at the same time, uh, wait for this Mercury to get direct and think, then things will start moving towards better. Sun being in your fourth house till the 17th and will be transiting through your fifth house. So this is going to be very good for the student, natives, for children. You're going to be maybe uh, looking at uh, your, um, you know, enhancing your uh, work, work culture, your um, education, knowledge, your hobbies, you're going to be pursuing your hobbies, you're going to be thinking of something, uh, some bright ideas, you're going to be very creative, suddenly you will feel because of the sun transiting through your fifth house. Authorities might be just coming to your rescue, they'll be supportive of you, influential people might be coming to your rescue, they'll be, in, you know, quite supportive and very understanding. So utilize this, Rahu is over your 12th house. Moon is going to be in the 8th house in the middle of the week. So this energy, because Rahu will be aspecting this moon also. So you will, in the 8th house, any which ways you're feeling quite dis, uh, discomfort when uh, moon is with Saturn. One is the fastest, one is the slowest. So it's a very contradictory kind of a, uh, you know, uh, combination. So what happens when you have these kind of energies, you know, it's the best is let Saturn win. Work hard. Don't give up because, you know, you will get this thought many times during this time that, no, I don't feel like doing this. Oh, I'm done. I don't want to, you know, anymore. So all those energies will be there. But at the same time, Jupiter's grace, how can we forget that? So Jupiter will be giving you that push, that boost. Go ahead, dear, just go ahead. I'm there by your side. Okay. So this is the divine grace that you're getting it's a very good time to enhance your education your knowledge your distributing of knowledge learn and let others also learn give what you have learned okay don't keep it to yourself you will go the next minute you never know and you will take it along with you up there what's the point so give to others be more giving be be more be a healer be more compassionate towards people the more you are compassionate the better life gets also the better is your life your outlook changes okay moon will be transiting through your ninth house and that's the time when you will be feeling very adventurous maybe going out for a dinner with your partner or you will be coming across some elderly people your gurus or you know your friends or somebody who is actually teaching you something uh, who is asking you to do something better so that advice you know that uh, you will get when moon is in your ninth house would be definitely taking you to places so take that advice of the people around you that that's going to be really helpful um, start reading a book start learning something it is definitely going to give you some extra bent that uh, extra edge actually, because you're working, you're confining yourself to your own, you know, subject or your own, uh, uh, you know, genre or your own area. Why not just break that and just move out of that limitation, uh, that limitations, the boundary. So just break it and move ahead, come out of it. And you will see that, oh, there's a, th th there's lots to do. There's lots to learn and to impact there's a bigger picture waiting there okay think of that bigger picture think of achieving the goals that you have actually not even thought of till now okay so the benchmark should be somewhere if you if you if you your benchmark is here and you reach till here 
so it's better that you know you raise this bar because you you can't do this right so raise this bar and then this will automatically get raised okay so just work through these kind of energies for you i can suggest that um, do the ganesha chant that's the best om gangan patay namo namaha om um and uh, you can you know maybe donate if at all you are feeling the anxiety even more you're feeling that you are getting very harsh in speech donate the green lentils that's something which is going to really help you to the uh, uh, small children you know who are young children so it will be really or maybe to the orphanage some uh, one kg on wednesdays donate it will really help you okay it will help the others also and it will help you uh, to improve your mercury so you, how you make out that your mercury is weak it's only uh, by uh, you know assessing that you know what are the significations of mercury mercury is uh, writing mercury is speech so maybe you're getting very harsh this time so you have to balance your thought process must be balanced so do that okay it will help you for cancer natives moon is going to be transiting through your 6th 7th and 8th houses so here little difficult week actually to um, uh, start with because moon in the 6th house you know will give you uh, the bent of mind towards making striking conversations with your coworkers service house of service uh, health uh, you know you can be focused on the health so you have to really be maybe working harder to attain those goals you're really working harder working out and you will maybe you know working extra harder that day but the results definitely will be felt if you work hard they don't go to a waste moon is going to be conjoining uh, saturn and jupiter in capricorn sign in the middle of the week that is on the 14th and 15th going to be in capricorn so this will give you some kind of uh, irritation or maybe some possessiveness about the partner doubt towards the partner because saturn is also there jupiter is also there so expansive energy about the seventh house so you have to um, strike a balance actually you know you have to maintain some kind of uh, you know maybe you have to calm down you don't have to give up on your partner um, and do not be too pushy you can be too pushy but this is a very good time to uh, you know make your relationship better also maybe you're working towards that see sixth house lord jupiter is in retrogression in the seventh house so this is not considered to be that great uh, you know transit for relationship of course uh, the results will be completely completely uh, different uh, dependent on your personal chart and the dasha but as per the transit you know if somebody is uh, having this chart so i would say that there is some trouble in relationship some divorce some separation you're already contemplating or maybe you know you're not in a mood to um, compromise or adjust you have adjusted a lot lots and now you want to just part ways okay so you have to strike that balance sun is also going to be in your fourth house fourth house will give you a lot of uh, aggression also this time would be this week can give you a lot of aggressive en energy so the best went is start pursuing your hobby you know one at least any kind of hobby that you have you should pursue that it is going to give you that kind of uh, you know uh, diversion so that you know you are focused on something which is positive which gives you that positive energy rather than you know being too nitpicky being too negative so you have to have that kind of a uh, went so uh, mercury is in retrogression jupiter is in retrogression <clears throat> uh and mars also you know being the uh, yoga kara graha is in the third house which is again a very uh, powerful placement for making this decisions boldly though it is combust it's going to be very closely conjunct though mercury 
Mars and Sun, they are going to be very closely conjunct, tightly conjunct. So this can give you some kind of uh, lack of decision making, travels might be cumbersome, uh, problems with the authorities, you, your speech can go harsh, but at the same time, very powerful transit because it will give you a lot of strength to make decisions boldly. The decisions that you could not make from a long, long time, lying pending. So this will actually help you make those decisions also. This is the time. Okay, this is the right kind of time. Um, your Lagnesh being moon, moon is going to be in the eighth house. So when moon is transiting the eighth house, it will give you a lot of restlessness. This week is a little, you know, uneasy week. So it, it's like a cycle, you know, which is sometimes up, sometimes down. So it's okay. Flow with the flow. Flow with the flow. Just take care of your health. Take care of your mood swings. Uh, insurance, income tax return, if you have to file. All those things you can do on this day. Also, it can give you some kind of anxiety towards your partner, towards your partner's uh, relatives or your in-laws, or it can bring that partner that, that was left long ago, uh, just appears, suddenly reappears, and you feel, oh my gosh, what I didn't call for this. You were not prepared yourself or your boyfriend comes in the picture, but do not get carried away that you have a partner already and then somebody comes from the past and you switch, which is not right. If you have left that person, there must be some reason that that will repeat or maybe that will turn even worse. It can worsen. So do not even think of moving back to that person again. Problems with the investments you must be having uh, maybe you are not getting some right kind of uh, investment uh, sources or you're not getting that kind of advice from the right kind of people. So you are quite restless because of that also. But yes, you will get the relief soon with the, um, of course, uh, Jupiter getting direct and moving towards your eighth house. So that will be quite re a relief for you. Okay. So this week is uh, sort of a you know mixed bag, I would say. But do not just get, be pushy. And that suspicion you have to take out from your mind. Okay. So for cancer natives, what I can suggest is uh, try wearing more uh, white colored clothes. It will help you uh, wear a silver chain. Okay. Coming to the next sign, that is Leo. So for Leo natives, moon is going to be transiting through your uh, fifth, sixth and seventh houses. So it's a very beautiful time to uh, decide about your friend circle about your investments maybe you're thinking of um, investing somewhere overseas already you are contemplating on education on uh, marriage romance do not try to get into that zone of argumentation more this week avoid if you do then that is going to be prolonged so you have to be extra careful about that as well. Relationships, of course, are going to be improving. Um, but the significator of relationships is afflicted because of the Rahu Ketu energy. But don't worry, uh, this Venus is in the Kendra. Okay. And it is looking at this uh, own place that is Taurus. So Venus becomes stronger than Rahu, of course. Okay, so don't fear these Chayagrahas. They are going to be actually here and then they will just go. They are here for just a while. Okay, so don't worry about it. Um, moon is going to be in the seventh house. I've explained there are certain uh, arrangements where you have to compromise. You have to make certain arrangements where you can compromise and get them together. For Leo natives, uh, there is... Um, moon's transit which is happening in your fifth sixth and seventh houses this week so you might be getting in that mode of uh, too much of passion romance this week you're going to be meeting your partner maybe or maybe you are going to be meeting that person whom you have been dating uh, online and you suddenly come across that person quite likely mercury is retrograde so be watchful it can lead to some kind of confusion even more uh, or maybe you will meet but you know to meet it is an ordeal you know something or the other is happening postponement delays you're going to be feeling all those energies as well but yes uh, it's also majorly because Venus, the significator of relationship, is under affliction because of Rahu Ketu energies.
So uh, it can lead to some kind of confusion in relationships, scandals in relationship. Somebody who is actually hiding something might just come, come up, you know, uh, in the limelight. So you might feel very uncomfortable or jittery also. But Leo people, definitely your Saturn's transit is positive now because Saturn is moving in the forward motion. So your seventh Lord is moving in the forward motion means that there is going to be good connectivity with your family, with your people around you. Relationship is going to improve. You're going to be pretty much uh, towards initiation of things. You're going to be charged up now. Those energies are pretty predominant during this transit also you have mercury in retrogression being the dhanabhava lord uh, that is the wealth giving planet so it's in retrogression so you are a little frustrated because of the wealth or maybe you're going to be slogging it out but you're not being paid for what you're doing so you feel quite uncomfortable oh i should have asked for a raise i should have uh, fought it out for my increment. So you are actually repenting on all those things also because Rahu won't let you do all that. Rahu is in your 10th house zone. So whatever you have, you should make peace with it. Once Rahu transverses into the uh, you know ninth house, things might just gradually you know start improving. Uh, also, Moon is going to be in your sixth house. You'll be a fitness freak. You may, might be just working out, yoga. During this time, you might be just, uh, you know, uh, uh, you 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 you're going to be actually inclined towards or focused towards your health, your body, and your looks. Um, uh, fitness regime you're going to be following, organizing things around you. You know, there's a lot of clutter, a lot of litter. So you are going to be cleaning that up. Maybe you're working and you're not finding time. You your partner is also working. You're not finding time. Uh, because in the sm small units, this is a very regular feature. You know, I get these kind of clients who are, you know, very uh, much into, uh, you know, uh, you know, work and not finding that kind of time for each other. So that brings about a lot of complications these days in relationships for that reason only, because there is very little time for each other. So you have to spend more time and Moon is going to be in the seventh house. You might just want to spend more time with your partner, with your family. So I think you should just, uh, you know, pay more weightage to your relationship as, uh, you know, you um, as compared to your um, material realms. Pay pay attention to your relationships. Okay, you should respect your elders. That's also the sun's remedy because sun is going to be in debility in your third house. 3, 6, uh, 10, 11, uh, sun's transit is not bad though, but still it is in debility. So you, you know, you have to be extra careful about your speech authority, you know, don't misuse all those things because Rahu is in your 10th house will not let you, uh, you know, do uh, right kind of things, take right kind of decisions. So that is something which will suffer because of this Rahu in Kritika Nakshatra also. So I think you can just start cooking in case you wish to. At least one meal in a day, you should start cooking. You can do the sun chants, Gayatri Mantra, that is Om Bhur Bhua Svaha Tat Savitur Vareniyam Bhargo Deva Siddhi Mahi Dhyo Yonaha Prachodayat. You can chant it uh, from nine times, then 18 times, whatever you can, just in the multiples of nine, you can just keep on increasing the number. Mercury is also in your second house. So even if it is giving you slow uh, growth, slow income, but still, it is because of Mercury's retrogression. Once it's getting direct, things are going to be better off because then Mercury will be coming to uh, forward and moving to the Libra sign at that time. Okay. Coming to the next sign, that is Virgo. All right. For Virgo natives, Moon is going to be transiting your fourth, fifth, and sixth houses. Very emotional about your family. Maybe you have taken out that album or that CD. You know, early times we had CD. And you started to play that and you are back to that, you know, down the memory lane and you're thinking of so many things. Oh, my gosh. You know, I wanted to, uh, you know, I would have done that. I should have done that. I wish I would have done that. All those questions are coming into your mind now. So you have to uh, accept all these things. It's OK. Once in a while, if you think about all those things about your past, definitely that there is some vacuum, you know. So that is why you're just, you know, seeking that. Uh, call up that friend you know you have not been able to from a long time you have got that disconnection so just meet those people call them up be more nurturing kinds 
maybe some property related decisions you will be making. Okay, so that is uh, Mercury is retrograde. So wait for Mercury to get direct. You will not be able to make right kind of decisions with, with this Mercury in the in the retrogression. Though it first house Mercury is considered to be good and uh, you get very much inclined towards your talkative or you're inclined towards, uh, you know, to making uh, notes and all very meticulously doing things, very analytical. So Mercury in the first house is uh, your Lagnesh after all, and it's forming the Pancha Mahapurusha Yoga also for the babies who are born at this time. Rahu energy in the ninth house seems to be a little bit, you know, uncomfortable energy because, you know, Rahu is a very materialistic planet. It's like smoky. These are two points, south and north node. They're just two points. So when Rahu sits in the ninth house, it really pushes you to uh, do something, uh, lose your ethics and do something very uh, unethical. So all those you have to really work through. You don't have to make decisions which actually destroy your own uh, integrity, destroy your own work culture, your ethics. So don't leave that because of this Rahu energy. I keep forewarning you for that reason. Do not make any decisions which backfire later. Everything should be like a foolproof planning. Do that and then take the final call because right now things are very uncertain. So we all have to be very, very precise, very, very careful about and sit where you are. Sit where you are. Uh, do not make any hasty decisions, okay? It can just backfire. Uh, moon will be in your fifth, sixth houses also this week, as I said. So this is going to be giving you a lot of connection with your children. Children might be moving abroad. They'll be maybe studying romantic association, you know, with your people. Uh, uh, with the per person you are, have been dating might just increase for two and a half days, two quarter days. Uh, you feel that connect with the, uh, with the person you just met and very strong bonding. It's not that that, that person has to be your, <clears throat> you know, a marriage partner, that alliance. It can be that that person is a very good friend, uh, you know, that you were actually looking for from a long time. So you find that friend. So you feel very uh, happy and elated this week. Learn a language. Do things which actually enhance your future, enhance your career also. Uh, there's a lot of change and, you know, you're going to be following a lot of, uh, you know, organized kind of a structure. So that is something which is very positive. You're organizing things and you're going to be actually, uh, you know, um, be very meticulous about things also. Very meticulous. Very good week. Actually, this way it becomes very nurturing kind of a moon this week and it will make you very compassionate also. So the remedy that I can give you for you is that donate green lentils to the orphans or the needy, uh, one kg, two kg. It's up to you on the weekday. That is on, you can do it on a Wednesday, on a Friday or on a Sunday. It's all up to you. But do this remedy, it will really help you. And do Ganga Om Ganga Patahe Namo Namaha Om. This chant you have to do 108 times on Wednesdays and Sundays, especially. Okay. Coming to Libra sign. So for Libra natives, Moon is going to be transiting your third, fourth, and fifth houses this week. It's forming a connectivity with Sun and Saturn this week and also Rahu. Um it's actually very, uh, you know, it's charged up because of this Martian energy also, because Mars is looking at this um, moon from the fourth aspect. So you might be thinking of property you, right now. You're thinking of growth, how you can, you know, work towards enhancing your financials, how you can build on that. So all those energies have suddenly become too much. You know, the, you are thinking of all those energies a lot. Entertainment a lot. You are communicative. You want to talk to people a lot also this week. So do it. You know, there's no harm if you take the initiative. I feel that you sh and everybody and anybody can take the initiative in friend circle, especially when you're moving around in your friends with your friends. Uh, some expenditure on the gadgets you'll be making. Or uh, maybe, you know, you buy something and then, you know, maybe you reject it or you just have it, uh, you've got it spoiled or it 
falls and breaks, be careful, be extra cautious. It's not that I will speak and it will happen, but I still want you to be very careful with Mars and Mercury combination, you know, which are combust also in the 12th house of yours. Mind your uh, driving lessons that you're taking, you know, just take it easy. Or maybe if you are already driving, be careful in driving also, making decisions regard property, land, uh, real estate, all those you have to be very careful while signing the documents because Mercury is in retrogression, not to forget. Your Lagnesh is in Rahu Ketu axis, which is in the second house, house of family of the partner. So there can be some issues or the problems related to your family or there can be financial problems. There is some crunch that you're going through because of this Venus uh, being the Lord of your eighth in the uh, second house. So some speculative income on cards. There can be some scandal, some secret love relationship, which is, you know, be, uh, you know not in the limelight, might just come into the limelight. It can also bring about your ex in your life, back to your life, which can be really uncomfortable kind of an energy. Or maybe you're leaving your uh, current partner and going to the, your ex. That is something that you have to, uh, that's your karma. Don't add on to your karma. Just let that go. That relationship which you have left from a long time, don't go there again. There must be some reason, you know, if you revisit these places, you definitely have to lose something again. So it's better that you are prepared. Just let go of this relationship. Be in the current relationship that is going to be very positive for you. Moon will be in your fifth house, fifth house and sixth house also. So you will be feeling a lot of energy towards education, finance, creativity, uh, co-workers. You will be talking about some project, you know, you're going to be meeting them. You're going to be often, you know, planning. A lot many things are going on during this time. And also there can be some kind of, uh, uh, you know, health regime, fitness regime, organizing your structure, organizing your planner, your calendar. All those energies are pretty predominant. You Maybe, you know, you're going to be cleaning up the clutter that you are surrounded by. Okay, and now today I'm going to be taking this file and I'm going to be sorting the papers out. That can also happen by the end of the week. So, Make sure that, you know, the, the days can vary, you know, plus minus one day can happen, but start working through these energies also. For you, you know, the best chant would be uh, the Durga chant or the Saraswati Ma chant, that is Devi chant we say. So do that chant, wear maximum um, white colored clothes, silver color things, wear a silver chain around your neck because, you know, Ketu is in your second house and this area is denoted by uh, you know, uh, this neck is the second house, neck speech also. So you have to maybe, uh, you know, pacify this planet. So don't wear much blacks because Venus is with Ketu. So there will be some kind of smoky kind of a shadowy kind of a, uh, you know, that you will feel around that aura is changing because of this. Suddenly you feel that your complexion is getting darker acne is happening so all that is very uncomfortable kind of a thing because your lagnesh is transiting through the second house which is very positive undoubtedly it enhances your financials but when it is in rahu ketu axis things change okay there will be some complications that you have to go through and sort them out during this transit so the best would be that chant that i have given you um, do the saraswati chant i will mention in the description box also do go back and uh, hear that on the YouTube, okay? Take care of your health. I keep repeating that with Rahu energy in the 8th house. Kritika's nakshatra. So you might be actually suddenly developing the interest to cook or maybe you are ordering, uh, for the, uh, getting the outside food delivered a lot during this time. So make sure that, you know, it doesn't lead to some health issues. Be careful right now. We, we think that the, nothing is going to happen, you know, COVID is over, but we must take all the precautions, okay? Coming to the next sign, that is Rishika, that is Scorpio. For Scorpio natives, uh, your Lagnesh, first of all, is in the 11th house, combust and also uh, in plant reward with Mercury. So what happens? Ma Mars will win, of course. Mars is the winner. Um, because he's the soldier, he's the, you know, the army man, or we can say the uh, warrior, uh, warrior. So you will definitely be feeling uh, like 
too much of energy towards uh, arguments, towards making decisions as per your taste, your choice. So you have to balance things out now. Uh, because Mars is combust, whatever said and done, Mars is combust. So it's not giving that, emitting that kind of energy where, you know, you feel uh, you can throw that light on others, you know, you can light up the others. So that is not possible with Mars in uh, combustion. The, that's actually the Asta, the Astangada, as we say. So we have uh, the Shara also, we have Durga Ashtami this week also. Uh, so I think the best would be that you do the Durga chants. It will help you do Hanuman Chalisa regularly. That will also help you, you know, because Rahu uh, and Ketu axis is over your first and seventh house. So do the Durga chants that will help you or do something which is, you know, good for, uh, which gives you that connectivity with the goddess. Anything that you are fond of, anything, because we have to be flexible in these things. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. I'm not saying that, you know, you're fasting and then you don't go out. It's not possible. Even if you're fasting, you should actually go out. But start speaking less. That is one remedy that I can give you. Um, also, moon will be transiting through your third, fourth, uh, uh, third, fourth houses also. So this will bring about some travels or difficulty in traveling, or maybe you're going to be thinking of some official trip you're going to be taking. So maybe you're uh, very uh, tied up and you don't feel like traveling also. Okay. So it can become very cumbersome, as I said. Um, Rahu is looking at this zone, you know, of Capricorn and Virgo. So it can lead to some heavy investments, inclination towards investments. So once Mercury gets direct, you can just consult somebody and then take his advice and then make the decision, his or her advice, and then make the decision. Okay. Sun is going to be in debility this week in your 12th house. So it will give you a lot of seclusion. You don't feel like mixing with people. You're too much. Uh, maybe somebody has hurt you so badly that you don't want to mix with people. You want to seclude yourself, isolate yourself, meet people, mix with them, do things for them, do be a healer. You can do that easily. Okay. Moon will be in your fourth house. Lastly, so that will be an emotional bent of mind, education initiation. Maybe if you have a kid who is going to start education, so that can also happen with this moon's transit through your fourth house. Some overseas assignment that a child can get as well. Okay. So just seek advice. I think you need help. So seek advice and then make, make decisions. Okay especially for investments and lie low when mercury is retrograde lie low don't go in for some heavy investments okay coming to sagittarius for sagittarius nearest moon is going to be over your first house second and third so this is going to be bringing about a lot of um, changes around you you're going to be nurturing kinds emotional kinds maybe you will change your look altogether you want to look good be careful with Venus transiting through your 12th house. It can lead to some kind of dissatisfaction also because Venus is in Rahu Ketu axis. So if you go in for some haircut, you know, it can be that you are not too happy with it, right? You can make some wrong choices about clothes also. Some uh, vehicle that you buy, you're not too happy when you drive or maybe it has to be sent back to the showroom and you have to bring buy another one again or you have to wait for the next one, right? It can delay some frustration it has to give so if you are in that artistic field or you're in that profession where you know you have inclined towards or you're mixing with the um you know film industry or fashion designing or something so you have to be extra cautious because venus is under affliction so it can cause some kind of worry in those areas of course it's not considered to be that great a placement though ketu feels good here Ketu is very happy here, but still, you know, Venus is not. So we have to make this Venus happy. So how do we do that? Uh, donate something in silver. You can donate rice also. You can donate sugar also because uh, nowadays sugar also shines, right? So you can donate sugar. Wear a yellow color or, uh, you know, a silver color thread or silver th silver uh, metal in around your neck. That will actually help you a lot. Okay. So... So moon will be in the second and third houses also. It will give you some, uh, as I said, some journeys, some cumbersome uh, trips. You don't want to. 
uh, sun and mars are the dig belly here so the authorities might be uh, acknowledging you this week some promotion also is likely change of place can also happen in your case so in case you're thinking of moving so do it on uh, you know especially on the 18th it's a good time and then maybe you know you can do it um, after diwali coming to the next sign that is capricorn for capricorn natives moon is going to be transiting through your 12th first and second houses you have mixed with people you've done a lot of party you have done a lot of projects you've completed a lot of work now you want to take some rest two quarter days you don't want to do anything first two quarter days is going to be uh, you know a secluded kind of uh, an atmosphere for you you're not feeling up to it nothing concrete is happening or maybe you're planning something big you're already thinking those ideas are actually coming up and you want to actually utilize those ideas now this is the time to utilize it so if at all there is some kind of uh, you know um uh, uh you know if at all there is some kind of business that is a pro uh, business proposal from the overseas utilize it you should actually um uh, do it you know take it up all right um Also, moon will be transiting over your first house. So that is the time when you will feel like changing your looks. You will be thinking of growth. You will be thinking of nurturing others. You can become very protective and possessive about people, about your job. You have that fear that you will lose that job. So you're working overtime. You're thinking of, you know, maybe it, there are a lot many challenges that you're going through with this moon transit, uh, you know, um, Saturn is transiting and Saturn is going direct also. So it is depleting your financials. Be careful about that. Save your money. Save this money right now, what you're spending left, right and center. This is not the time. Be practical as, you know, Saturn makes you a little practical itself if it's on the first house. So just be more practical. It will give you some kind of, uh, you know, you have to be emotional, but at the same time, you know, there should be some balance, you know, you can't be just emotional and make decisions. No, make right kind of choices, make right kind of decisions because of, uh, you know, the Saturn thing over your first house. Take time. Um, sun is going to be in your 10th house some authorities might change some work might change elevation or maybe you know some diversion also quite likely okay um because sun is in debility so i doubt there can be some promotion but yeah we can always wait if something happens well and good okay so do these uh you know remedies that i'm giving you just do the chant of uh, durga ma durga and uh, also propitiate Lord Shiva. Your financials, you have to work through, you know, a lot. You have to take care of your financials because you're losing out on your finances, uh, depleting finances and uh, eat right. You can have some indigestion also this week. Be careful. Okay. Coming to the next sign that is Aquarius. For Aquarius natives, moon is going to be transiting your 11th, 12th and 1st houses. So this is the time to mix with your friends. You are very social. You want to mix with them. You want to make decisions regarding your investments also. You're breaking some rules. Networking is the key though, but you're breaking those rules. So draw a line. Okay, it's a good time to spend with the friends and groups, of course. But however, you are more sensitive to the moods, moods of those around you. You could be feeling emotional about your sense of belonging or lack of with, uh, you know, whatever you're, you're lacking. You're with the like-minded people. So that's something which is really in your favor. You will be very interesting in uh, being closer with your friends, your groups that you're associated with, a lot of travels, you're going in back and forth uh, and, you know, be more aware of your attitudes and try not to be too possessive or restrictive towards others. It includes everyone. I'm not just saying that your partner, if you're single, then also you have to be extra, extra receptive to these energies you know, rather than just uh, letting, uh, you know, things happen on their own. You have to be aware of your attitude also, your goals, your attitude, your emotional attitudes that are truly expressing your individual nature. So just make sure that you do not get carried away with whatever, you know, you are 
uh, doing right now. Don't don't get carried away. It's going to lead you to a lot of uh, issues or troubles then later. And do not go in for some uh, makeover, you know, big makeover because moon is going to be at least when moon is in Aquarius, you know, from 16 to 17, also partial 18th, I would say. So you have to be a little extra careful about your, uh, you know, making decisions regarding the cosmetic things because Venus is in your 10th house and with K Rahu, in Rahu Getu axis, Rahu is in the 4th house. So it can give you some inclination towards cosmetics, cosmetic surgery, something to do with that. Venus is in Ketu's, uh, you know, with Ketu in Anuradha. Avoid, I would say avoid. Okay. Uh, for you, I can give a remedy for Saturn. You can uh, do the, you know, the best Saturn uh, remedy is to sweat it out. The more you sweat, <clears throat> you should work out. Uh, it will be like, because, you know, um, Saturn is what? Saturn is labor. Saturn is muscles. And when they toil, they sweat, right? Saturn is very happy at that time. So you should feed the lame, the one which is not having a leg. So donate that person. That's a very good remedy for Saturn. Also do the um, Shiva uh, Shakti chants also you should do. Or maybe you can simply do uh, Om chant. Okay, it will help you. Om, long Om, nine or 18 times every morning. Okay, or night. Coming to Pisces sign. For Pisces, moon is transiting through your 10th, 11th, and 12th houses. So it is pushing you to, uh, you know, um, uh, leave the job, be less creative, and not having any kind of, making any kind of adjustments with your own people at the pace of work. You're getting irritated. You're getting very irritated because they are not acknowledging you. So in turn, you are also being uh, the same. You're also not accepting their ideas. Maybe, you know, you have to, open up a little mentally. You don't have to have any blocks. The moon is going to be with Jupiter and Saturn. Also the last sign I'm saying that because Lagnesh is in the 11th house. So you have that kind of expansive energy to do things. Um, you might be, uh, you know, feeling quite charged up uh, or maybe you're moving around in your circle so well that you're very happy about it. You're feeling that people are actually now coming forward to support you also. Because you were having moon transit in the Sagittarius sign, they are very uh, frustrated because of the Sagittarius or the IC sign, in fact, because they're ruled by Jupiter and Rahu and Ketu and their transits have not changed much this year. So that is a sort of a worry, some area also for you as a student of astrology. I'm just telling you this tip. So uh, the best is that you wear something, uh, you know, in yellow or just a small... Uh, you know, yellow color uh, powder you can apply on your forehead. Add a little bit of water and apply it. That's a very good remedy for Jupiter as well as Mars. So do that. Also, there is a, a Rahu and aspect on these houses, on these places. So there is a strong connectivity of Rahu with the 7th house, 11th house also. 7th house is the public figure. And, uh, you know, 7th house is what are the people around you, the masses, the other people apart from you. So there, Mars is there. Mercury is there. A lot of negative energy is involved with Mars. Mars's presence. So it will give you some kind of uneasiness. You know, you will feel that there are there are certain things. Oh, I should have worn that clothes. That that clothes. Those clothes rather than this one. You know, you have all those things going on in your head. So you have to be. Uh, you know, you have to strike a balance. Uh, you're very much into seclusion. You're withdrawing yourself from others. Maybe you're taking somebody to the hospital. So you are quite disturbed this week. So the best is don't drive. When you have this kind of a issue, you should take rest. Okay. Don't avoid uh, to drive. Venus is with Ketu as it is, you know. So one must be very careful. Your fourth house is also under reflection because Mercury is conjunct your, uh, you know, your, uh, second lord so there can be some difference of opinion with people around you with your in-laws also you can have some trouble so you have to be extra cautious about these energies and uh, just if you want to donate something you should actually donate some uh, yellow color clothes if you want to okay so this is it for all the 12 zodiac signs thank you so much for watching and uh, uh, i hope 
you have uh, enjoyed these readings and uh, let's hope for the best for everybody and i hope that your weeks get better and better with the passage of time thank you so much for watching stay blessed everyone om tat sat